Corey's helping me today and we're going to go ahead and start my cabbage plants and my pepper plants. Really exciting day for me. It's the first gardening of the year, which I always love. Today is a good day to garden if you go by the zodiac signs, by the almanac, if you follow the moon phases and all that. I have a calendar that I produced this year. Uh, it's really just an almanac calendar. Probably if your grandparents or your mother or, and father used one, it's just from the same company probably, and it just has my name on it. But I did that because so many people couldn't find them. And I have a few left, so I'll link to that. But I would encourage you, if you're interested in having one, to look around your town and you might find one for free, either at a funeral home, feed store, bank, or whatever might be handing them out for free. Anyway, so this is a good day, so we're going to start with that. Corey's filling up my, my containers here. I got these last year. They're like silicone on the bottom. They're pretty sturdy. And then they have this tray for catching any water, and I really like them. I got them. I got these at Tractor Supply. I'm sure other places have them, and the brand of them was Burpee. The Burpee company made them, and they worked really well. And I like the fact that they're, they're sturdy enough that I'll be able to use them for several years, so I like that too. Another thing that that I did for the first time last year, Matt and I, or I did, but it was for both of us, is that I bought a, um, instead of just using the grow lights like we've used in the past when we were starting stuff inside that hang down low, we bought a shelving unit that has grow lights in it. And it works really well. There's a couple of things I don't like about it. And I, when we move into that area and we get all this done, I'll be sure to, to show you all the details so uh, you can judge if it's something that would work well for you. We're lucky that we have a greenhouse. So when it comes, gets a little bit warmer, comes time for tomatoes, we will start all of those in the greenhouse. And that's so much easier because the sun can do its thing and all the mess and the dirt like we're making today is out there instead of in here. So that's so much easier. But for my cabbage and my peppers, it's just too cold out there to start them right now. The sun, the way it orients in the sky at this time of the year, it doesn't really hit the greenhouse as each day it hits a little bit more. And we don't have it heated, it's not heated. We do have like a little, just kind of electric heater that we use in it on nights after the tomatoes are in there. If they're, you know, sometimes in the spring there'll be those errant nights that are, all of a sudden it's gonna dip way down, maybe into the low 30s, upper 20s. And if it does that, we'll use our little heater. But other than that, it's, it's totally unheated. And we have started peppers in there a lot. I always did until the last few several years that I've started trying to um, start them inside. And they grew fine out there. But the problem is peppers take so long to grow that by the time we planted them outside, they were just about this big. And they did grow and they did produce, but they didn't start producing until almost August. It, just, it was just a slower process. So I've, I've fooled around with doing it inside, and last year was the first year that I had huge success because of that new kind of system that I bought and making sure that I started them early. So then by the time we planted them last year, instead of being like that, they were more like that, like the ones that you, you, know, you might see at your local uh, nursery or something. And so we had peppers way sooner. We were getting peppers probably in uh, end of June, 1st of July, so that was wonderful. So we're also gonna do that. Another thing that I want to do that I didn't do last year, I got lazy. So when my cabbage started coming up in these and they got to be about that big, I thought, well, it's so close to time that um, I'm going to plant them outside anyway. I don't want to up pot them. I don't want to do that. And so I didn't. And then they kind of started going, <laughs> they didn't work thriving as much. So this year I'm going to try to make sure as soon as they get a little size on them, I'm definitely going to up pot all the peppers and all the cabbages. And I know that'll make a difference too. I think Corey's about to run out of, out of soil, but we've got some. And talking about the soil, um, I'm by no means an expert on any of this, on anything. I'm just an avid gardener that's been gardening since I was a little girl. And over the years, especially since I've been married, I've found out what works best for me. I always encourage people, do all kinds of research, follow the experts and see what they say, but then see what works best for you. But so for me, you, buying regular potting mix is what I usually start all my seedlings in, and they do just fine for me. Now, other people have different opinions, and that's okay too. Uh, but for me, I just buy regular uh, potting mix, and that works fine. So now while Corey goes and looks for some more potting mix, I have some, thank goodness, I'm going to start thinking about the seeds that we're going to plant. 
for the cabbage, we're going to do the Brunswick and uh, Copenhagen are the two that I'm going to plant. Don't do anything fun with that one. Oh, I won't. I'll wait on Corey to come back before I start. I've got us some little markers so that we can mark. And then for the for the peppers, we're going to do, and we won't plant all of these. We won't even plant all the cabbages, really. I do want to plant a lot of cabbage, though, because I want to share some with Corey and with Granny. But shishitos, we're going to do those. Those grow really great for us. Some sweet bananas. Corey wanted to do those. Um, from Some golden marconis. We're going to do those. Habanadas. Those do really good for us, too. And that's a sweet one. Um, sweet pepper. Corey wanted to do some of those. The cayennes. That's um, Carolina cayenne. Matt loves those. So we're going to do those for him. And I like to have some cayenne. I don't eat them. But to put in peppers and stuff like Put in pickles. Put the peppers in the pickles and stuff like that. And then California Wonder, Corey wanted to grow those. And these were some Ramona gave me last year that we really liked. It was like a, it's a hybrid of pepper. It's candy cane red. And they were really good and did really good for us. Then there's two. These were Sweet Pepper, King of the North, and Ash County Pimento. And I have grown those in the past, but last year I made note on them that when I planted them, started them, a few of them in here, neither one of them come up at all. So I'm just going to plant one or two of those just to see, and if they don't come up this year, then I'll know these seeds or something's happened to them, and I probably should just discard them. So again, when it comes, like I said, I'm not an expert by no means, but when it comes to planting either in here, like starting these seedlings, or outside, I'm of the mind to just do... I mean, like I said, you should research, of course, and you should find out that, but I don't make it very difficult. I just poke me a little hole, put the seed in, and cover it up and water it, and usually that works. The amazing thing about seeds is that they really want to grow. That's their purpose in life, is to grow into another plant, um, propagate, and then you can come back, Corey, come on. Oh, Corey can't find the, the soil. It's on the, I'm sorry, I should have told you, it's on the porch, going down the steps. Yeah, she was looking in the basement. Poor girl, I should have told her. Um, anyway, it, it really wants to grow. That's its purpose in life, its purpose for being. So most of the time, it really works great. Um, when I think about that, I'm always intrigued and amazed and pleased uh, by volunteer plants. And when I call, what I call a volunteer plant is, next year throughout my garden, there will be Tommy Toes that come up that I didn't plant. A Tommy Toes, a small little tomato. There will also be... Um, ground cherries will come up in different places. I don't plant them either. They just volunteer. They just come up. Sometimes I might have a pumpkin or something. I'll have watermelons probably. So those volunteers, they have literally laid out there through the cold and the heat and the, you know, back and forth, the rain, the little bit of snow we've got all out there unprotected. Maybe, you know, something's a dog or something's dug around them and then they still manage to come up. So that's how amazing seeds are. It almost makes me wonder uh, every year, what if I went outside and just plant, just threw everything down? Would it, then would it, you know, like in the fall, and then would the next year, would it all come up? I'm, I've never tried that, but it does make me, make me wonder about it. So now that Corey's found the dirt, we're going to start putting the seeds in. So I'm going to start with this one here that Corey's filled for me. My, the soil is another thing. Some people go ahead and wet their soil. This is a little damp, but we didn't purposely wet it. It was just damp because that's just it. It's how it was. Outside. Been outside, sitting outside. But we will water them good. So let's do with the. Let's start with the cabbage in here, Corey. So you want to write, um, write me a little thing there. Let's tr try the Brunswick. Let's try that. And I guess I'll plant a whole thing full of Brunswick. Someone bought me, Corey or Katie One, bought me a little, one of those little um, seed planter things for little tiny seeds like this, but I swear I just can't use it. I'm just, I don't know, probably just because this is what I've always done, is that I just, it's hard to break old habits, I guess, or I don't know. Just you know, After I learn how to do something, even if I know there's a better way, sometimes it's hard for me to switch my make my mind realize that and try something different and that's a fault of mine i shouldn't be like that that's good yeah another thing that we use with those uh i think one's enough corey for this one because we're going to do it all the same oh we're going to do yeah. everything yeah it's in this. there it's just going to be that another thing is that we use uh, little heat mats to get them started and i do think that works really helpful too 
just to give some heat from the bottom and the top. It seemed to really help my peppers. Somebody give me that tip. Somebody online. I don't remember if it's in a video or on a blog post, but they were right. It makes a tremendous difference about getting them to, to actually sprout faster. The only thing I wasn't pleased with last year that we started inside was the beets. They just didn't do no good. So I'm, I'm going to go back to my usual planting them outside, just direct sowing. Someone did, though, recently in the, our last video, me and Corey did about the seeds. They said that I should check out seed tape. So that's really interesting. I didn't even know what that was. So I researched it, and that's interesting. One person even told that you could make your own with flour and water like on a strip of paper towel. So if any of you have experience using that, please do leave a comment and share your knowledge because that sounded really interesting for things like beets and um, carrots and things. So it's like, um, think of it like, because little bitty seeds like this are so hard to space out if you're direct sowing them outside in the ground, you know, and you might drop three or four here and one and three or four. So you put them, it's like sticky. And so you spread them out like I want them that far apart or seven inches or whatever. And then you just lay that down, cover it up with dirt. And then someone said you could, uh, let's see, do we want to do another? Let's do one more, Brun. Since you've already wrote that, let's do a, is that, what's that? Copenhagen? Copenhagen. Okay, we'll swap out. Um, someone said that you could do it yourself. You could make, you could take some flour and water, mix it, make a little paste and put it out like on a paper towel or a strip of whatever, and then do it the same way. And mm. and put, put the little dot of the mixture, and then put your seed. So that sounded really interesting too. I see. So I might try that with my beets this year, but please, if you, I didn't even know what uh, seed tape was, so please leave a comment if you've used it and what you thought about it. If you hear a lot of noise, <laughs> this is more noise than Katie. Usually in my videos I say, if you hear a lot of noise, it's Katie in the dungeon. This is not Katie. This is people on our roof. We're having our roof redone. So if you hear, hear strange sounds, that's where it's coming from. So how many little seeds are you putting in each thing? Is it just one? I'm just putting one. A lot of times when I do tomatoes in a bigger container, I do three. And then I, or I do two at least. And then that way, if one doesn't come up, you know, you got a better chance of the other one coming up. But, but in here, season. it's just because there's so many and they're so little that I'm just doing one. Just doing one. But I'm thinking this would be enough for me and to share with you and Granny, you know, because that's how many. 16. Welcome. <laughs> you were counting to... that way and that way. I know yeah. what you were doing. Yeah, so anyway, so yeah. So mm -hmm. that would be 32 cabbages. Wow. Yeah. I still think we should do one more cabbage. Okay. Which do you want to do? Um, could we do both and maybe divide it down the middle? Mm -hmm. I'm going to start, start, let's see what we did in the beginning. So start with Brunswick. Uh, or we'll start with Copenhagen oh, since I've got it in hands. my hand, yeah. And we'll gotcha. put them over on this side. Gotcha. And that's still going to be... So that way we'll know it's this one and this one. Oh, yeah, you can draw a little arrow if you want to. The peppers will be harder because we're not going to plant as many of them. Okay, there's the Copenhagen. Okay, now we got our cabbage. We're going to start on our peppers. Let's do, let's just do, this one's going to be confusing, but let's do, I want to do, you know what? Maybe we should save these since I really don't even know if they'll grow, and we'll do those in the greenhouse because it won't matter if they don't come up. So let's let's do that. Let's get rid of those two. All right, California Wonder, Corey. How many you want these? Is this one you wanted two? So let's do like let's do four of these. So do me one, and we'll do four. Okay. You want to do the cayennes next? I guess we may go back through these again, but for now. So how deep do you know? I mean, how well, do you know how deep again, there's things? there's a little thing that you're supposed to do like a... I don't know well, if it's like... It tells you yeah, it tells you. It'll seed tell you. Depth. Seed depth. One fourth inch. So that's probably what about what I'm doing. But it yeah. does usually tell you. You're right. Thank you for doing that. I've done it for so long. I just do it. 
but you're right on most all seed things it tells you there's the soil temp it needs to be the sowing depth the final plant spacing which i usually never follow and then matt gets mad at me final how uh, final row spacing light full shade part shade days to emerge it tells you all kinds of stuff on the back which is really nice okay. even if you don't follow that these two yeah, I, that's what, I mean, you should follow it. You should do what people say, but it is true that, like I said, I don't, you may have missed that, that was when you was outside. Seeds have such power in them. They want to grow. You know, they really do want to grow. This one is a YOLO, Y-O-L-O. -O, and it's another sweet pepper. So we'll just do. And it's so funny because YOLO is like such a big saying yeah. with the kids. It is a big saying with the kids. Okay, another one done. Okay, these are shishitos. They're kind of a, a long um, green pepper. They're sweet and they grow so well for us. They just hang. I mean, they're just beautiful. We've grown them for the last two years and they're really good flavor. They freeze good and um, are good in, in pickles and everything. We're just really pleased with those. Okay, Tori, what about a habanada and again that one did really good for us i don't even know how many seeds i have left of it oh the sadness there's not four in there i definitely need to buy those there's only going to be two of them i need to replenish my supply i should have saved some pepper seeds and one reason i don't really save pepper and tomato seeds is that we grow our stuff so close together and things that easily cross-pollinate, like peppers and tomatoes, um, are hard to save seeds from. And other than like tommy toes, they seem to save pretty good. But because we grow things so close together, they almost always cross-pollinate. So what would happen if you collected a seed um, that had cross-pollinate? It would still be edible, I'm sure, and it'd be good, and you should do that and grow it if you wanted to, but it would just not look the same. It might look you know, different. Like I thought I was saving, and I did for many years, save a little Tommy Toe, like a pear-shaped tomato called sausage, cream and sausage. And then suddenly one year when I planted the seeds, uh, it wasn't that. It was like a reddish, bigger, it was just a weird tomato, weird shaped did with kind of a yellowy good? red. Yeah, but not as good as the cream and sausage, I didn't think. So anyway, that can happen. People that grow seed, that grow plants for seed, like to sell, they separate them by really far away, you know. Anyway, hmm. but there's just some things that cross-pollinate easy, and then other things not so much. Does it, it's, it's a little bit harder for that to happen. It can happen, but anyway, so I'll have to get me some more of those. How about let's do two of these. These are the candy cane. And that'll finish that little row out. And I think that was all that was in there. So that worked out good. No, there's more in there. There's more. So we'll save those. So this whole row? Uh, no, this, put it right there. There you go. Did you like the, so the cream and sausage was good? Yeah, that you remember that. We grew them for years. That was like the little yellow, long-shaped yellow ones, but just about that big. They were really sweet. Yeah, I, I like those. The seed catalog when I was there. And, and I bought seed, so now I have seed. So like I grew them last year again from, from new seed instead of my seed that had uh, cross-pollinated. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can grow them this year. You need some of them. So let's do uh, some of these golden. Golden Ma Marconi, I yeah. almost said macaroni. Yeah, Golden Macaroni. And there's a red, but I guess when me and you were picking them out that day, you said you wanted, you said go with golden. Oh, yeah, because the gold's pretty. Yeah. And they got really big for us last year. I planted red and gold, and they were, they're good ones too. They're sweet and do pretty good. Marconi Macaroni. Yeah. Okay, we've got two more trays left, but we're thinking we're going to wait on those. And Corey May, she wants to do some at her house too, so she may take those home with her. I'm going to let her have my grow lights from the kind that hang down. Austin can fix a place for her, and she's going to do some things over there. So now we just need to water these and get them on the grow shelf. Yay. So this is the little shelving unit that I bought. 
and I really like it. It has this has a neat little, you know, you can zip it all up and keep all the heat and the moisture in. It has this little thing that's supposed to tell you the temperature and the humidity. I never even used it last year, so I probably won't this year. Let me roll this back up out of the way. And you can also open it. So if you do seedlings, one thing, if you do them inside, not so much outside, is that you have to worry about them. You know, they need to, in other words, they're so tender, they need to feel some air movement so that they kind of get tough before you actually put them outside. So being able to roll that up helps. So I roll it up eventually. But in the beginning, I keep it all zipped up. So it worked really well. It has this light. You can see the light right there. I've got it by the window, but since I live on the north side, not much comes in my windows, or I would just use natural light. But this, this one, the bottom one's not so bad, but this one, you can see how the length. Now, I'm sure they did that so that if you were growing plants in here that were going to get really tall, that would be great, and you'd need all that extra space. But, of course, I don't need it for seedlings. I need them up close to the light. So what I do is I just, last year and this year, I just used boxes and stacked them up. I've got my uh, mats here and they're already plugged up, but I had some, some of our books on top of them just to make sure that they were going to actually stay uncurled They were because I had them rolled up. So that's what the books are for. I will remove them. But now we're ready to put them in there. So this one on the top, once I get them in there, you can see it could it could use, you know, it could be a little bit closer to the lights, but I'm going to leave it just like it is. This one, because of the boxes I used, just the width of them, and I didn't save these boxes. I just knew there'd be boxes around this year. I'll be up a little bit closer. So, and then I'll put these two right here. And as you can see, what would have been ideal for someone like me would have been if there was another shelf right here, and then you'd have more space. I mean, you know, it wouldn't be took up by the boxes. But uh, this did work, and in reality, for me, I don't need, I don't know that I would need that space anyway, because I still have the bottom that I can use down there. And once they get about that big, I'll up pot them to a different pot, and then put them back in here. And as they do grow, I can take out the boxes and lower the, you know, help them be lower away from this, because eventually they would start actually touching the light. And that if you've never used a heat mat before, we have them under there, it's just, it's not, uh, it doesn't even get as warm as like a, you know, you think about a uh, heating pad. It doesn't even get that warm. It's just a very low, low warmth, but helps it coming up from the, the bottom. And once I close all this in with the moisture and the heat, you will actually be able to, it'll be like a little greenhouse. You'll be able to see some condensation developing. Uh, to really hold in all that warmth and all that moisture and hopefully our seeds will sprout really quickly. Such an exciting day to be able to get that first little taste of gardening. The cabbage and the peppers now that we've got them started makes me think of the day when I'm gonna put the cabbage out there and even on up into the summer when I'm actually when warm weather's here and I'm actually ready to put the peppers out and then knowing all the wonderful goodness that will feed our family. Such an exciting time of the year. We hoped you enjoyed coming along with us while we got our seedlings started, our first seedlings of the year. We hope that you'll join us throughout the summer as we grow food to feed our family here in the mountains of Appalachia.